Hello and welcome to the third good quality video of my RuneScape private server tutorial start your own thing video. Okay, so anyway, this in this video is going to be showing you how to do how to make yourself owner and just how to do a few basic commands and stuff like that. So hopefully you downloaded Zenith or have a 667 base as this is only going to be for 667 revision. If you don't know what that is, you need to Google it. It's pretty much just what time of RuneScape the source files are made at. So like pre EOC, after the worldie, etc. Okay, so say you downloaded Zenith, which is what I was saying to do in my previous one. Zenith has a lot of bugs, and I'll explain how to fix them later on. But for now, go Zenith, and then you will get these things. You name me, oh, one thing I forgot to add, but I'll do that another game, is you need to get that. But um, anyway, go to source. Wait, actually first, this is your source. You have three major well not three but yeah pretty much three source bin and data um, and bin is I don't know just some random crap that you don't really need well I don't think I've ever actually used alright oh, bin is pretty much source but in class filed so your source gets converted to the bin I think I don't know I never actually looked in bin you know, anyway data has all the data so your characters uh, and character back backups, which doesn't really do anything. It combat definitions, uh, NPCs, all your data on NPCs and stuff, um, and your cache, which is the main thing that you need. Biggest file in the whole download. Um, you need the cache. Make sure either the source has the cache included, or you download the cache. I will not be supplying any of this, as I don't want to be screwed up in all the copyright crap that Jagex are doing. I'm just making videos for it, even though that could still semi be bad, but if it is bad, then I'll just remove them. But anyway, uh, go to source. Source is where all your main folders are. So, source, cache, game, blah, blah, blah. It's pretty self explanatory, really. The cache is all about the cache. Uh, cores are all about cores. Um, game is all the stuff in game, so that you edit. So then, player means it's related to players. Actions, content, etc., etc. Uh, in player, there'll be a file called player.java. Right click and go edit with Notepad or open Notepad. Like I said in my previous video, I recommend so strongly that you get Notepad or some form of good editing. Normal Notepad and Word do not really cut it. So drag it in and you'll get this. This is pretty much where it is, like where it's based. Like I have said before in my videos, I do not know Java, so this is not going to be some professional explained tutorial at all. It's not even going to be professional really, as I have not done commentary in a while, and I don't really care as long as it helps you. Um, so these, this is pretty much where it is, where the file is located, so com, iris, game, and player. Imagine the dots are like slashes, like slash, um, but we don't do slashes because that doesn't work. Um, so it's like that, it's pretty much. So it'll be like source. And it'll be like source. So it's like that, but without, you know, you get it. Okay, so this is all your imports. Imports are pretty much things that if you edit, say if you say for commands, or you want to change something that has to do with an item, or with items in general, then you need to import where the class file is for item, related to items, whether it's for item or item itself. If you want to edit something about world tiles or want to make something move with the world tile, you need to import that. So like I said, it's not very professional, as I do not know Java and I actually don't know the correct meaning for this at all. So anyway, player is pretty much just how players work. So there's all this stuff, um, you know, heaps and heaps of crap. So we what we want to find is this bit, which is down on 300ish. Um, where it says if username equals ignore case something e writes equals 7 with zenith 7 is owner so if you want to make yourself owner put in your name here <coughs> excuse me um, if you want to do spaces though when you're coding do not do a space you need to do one of those under scrolls as that will represent a, a space even if your name is your space name in game you still need to do the under scroll so where it says writes equals 7, you need to put in your name. If there's something called King Zenith, delete it. 
same with all the stuff, just delete, 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 make sure you do that. If someone can come on your server, make one account with one of these names, they have instant powers. So, right equals zero as a player. So you don't really have to delete that, but I would anyway. Um, rights two, I mean rights one is mod. So if this was rights one, it would be mod. Then rights two is admin. Rights three is hidden admin. And then four, five, or the up to six, I think it's just hidden admins and stuff. <coughs> anyway, right seven is the owner. So you need to change whatever is in this with your name. Brackets pretty much mean that this is something. So this bracket, the way you code is you have to either start with a statement, which is like if, an if statement, I'm pretty sure, then do a brackets, and then what the if is about. So the if is, if this username, ignoring all the case, uppercase, lowercase, is equal to, which is what these brackets mean, like if that is what the uh, username is, and then the brackets, I mean the quote marks are basically string, which is like letters, and so it's meaning your name. So it says if the username ignoring the case, this like word is the username, then do you need to start with brackets, there's an open bracket and a closed bracket, the open bracket is the start, and anything in between these brackets is what it will do. Like I said, I hope I'm explaining this right. But the good thing about Notepad++ is if you click a start, it will make the start bracket red and the like end bracket uh, red as well. So say you don't have an end bracket, then you will get errors as this is not ending. Okay, but anyway, <coughs> what it is saying is if the username in there, ignoring the case, is what you typed, set the rights to 7, which pretty much means if your name is that, then you are owner. So that's what you do. Delete every single other name on here unless you want to actually make them those rights. So that's pretty much how you make someone owner. Um, also, another thing, go back into your folder, source, I should hide that. Go source, com, rs, game, player, content and then commands.java this is one of the main things that you need to know is how to edit commands there's different types this pretty much explains it uh, <clears throat> the first one is an admin command so all the things from here all the way down so you're following this little line which is the bracket all the way down to keep going keep going keep going keep going all the way down to here is admin command. So all that is just for admin. Anything above, whatever's at the top can do the whole page. Whatever's at the bottom can only do what it is. So say admin, from the very top, admin can do all those commands plus all these commands and all the other commands, whereas mod can only do the commands below it, not the commands above it. So for example, you need to edit stuff like, uh, I don't know, just it's hard to tell you what to do really, but you can just read through this if you want. Uh, the basic format is if your uh, input, so to do a command you have to go dot dot then the command whatever it is. So if cmd equals zero, which is pretty much this, the first word is zero, <coughs> and it, if it equals, like ignoring the case, item, so if we went dot dot item, Remembering this is in the admin file, so only I mean the admin slot, so only admins can do this um, command. And player get rights equals seven, which means only the owner can do it. So if you type in dot dot item, and then your owner, and then if value of cmd one, which is the next one, so this is cmd one here, that is cmd two. So if cmd one equals int, which is a number, <laughs> like I said, it's not professional, and yada yada yada, all the stuff, it will add the item ID, because it's item ID, yada yada yada, if you do it wrong, so if you do it wrong, pretty much means it will send you this message saying to do that. So pretty much what this says is, if 
your CMD1, which is, oh wait, that's CMD0, not CMD2, sorry. If CMD2 equals item, ignoring the case, so we could have capital I or lower I, and CMD1 is a int or a number, so like 122228, and then you it will spawn the add item, item ID, which is that CMD length is greater than 3, so you then means number 3, so CMD3 is the next one, so this is CMD3, and if you put another number in, so like 1, it will spawn one of that item, if that makes any sense at all. Like I said, it's not professional, and I don't really do much tutorials, so hopefully this is helping you, and I'll stop it there as it's getting quite long.